Ooh, look at it. It's finished. Oh, the Mount Everest of knitting. Well, it's finished. And um, I had to do some alterations to it. First of all, when it was done, there are two things that really annoyed me. And I'm just going to wait for the train to pass. There we go. Yeah, I live near a railroad station. Very annoying. Well, you know what? I did follow the recipe really down to the T. You know, like every inch is the same on my jacket as in the recipe. And still, even though the length of the arm is 50 centimeters, which is like long, you know. <laughs> and there was this uh, thing where you had to knit this pattern right here because it was supposed to be bended up so that you had this lining inside of it well I took it on and it did fit when my arms was resting down the side but as soon as I stretched the arm straight out in the air it crawled up and looked a little bit too short you know so <laughs> Oh, whoops. <laughs> I had on the feeling that it was one of those long trains. I've lived here for a while, so I can kind of hear on the sound if it's a freight train or just a passenger train. So I had to do this into two videos. But I was talking about the length of the arms, the sleeves, and um, I'm a bit disappointed when I uh, reach my arms out straight in front of me, that this sleeve just crawled up on me. So it looks like it was a bit too short. So I had to knit a cuff inside of it. So now I got the option of having them, you know, like perfect how I want it. And I can even bend this up uh, if, if I want to. <laughs> then I was wearing it. And, uh, you know, I like to listen to audiobooks on my iPhone or on my phone. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone. I got an Android. <laughs> and then I realized I need a pocket. I need a pocket. So I had to figure out how to make a pocket and how to make it long enough for my Android phone. So what I chose to do was to make some sort of an invisible pocket where I, I just knitted the pattern and then put in a button and then the pocket is rather tall so that my Android can just stand there with the jack stick from my headset poking out because I could have made another solution because I got a big flower right here right so I could have made a pocket that was like the width of the flower and everything but then I thought hmm, this knitwear is not that firm so I guess that the phone would like tilt over and then maybe the cord from the headset would eventually poke through the knitted knitwear I don't know so uh I, I just skipped over where it was easiest for me and needed this tall, tall pocket. Like it a lot. Okay, next problem. <laughs> I'm wearing it and it looks nice from the front. And then I just noticed that from the back, it just looks, I don't know. There's something, um, how can I explain it? It looks very masculine from the back. Like like a men's jacket or something I don't know if you can imagine it's because like this is very square uh, so I was thinking <laughs> maybe it's just me but doesn't it need a hoodie I definitely think it would do something to the shape of it if the the squareness of the back was broken up by a hoodie because I don't know I don't know I can't explain it it's beautiful it's beautiful I love it I love it it's just that when you wear it then the color sinks down because the jacket is so heavy so it looks like you're wearing a tight scarf and it does something to the shape of the shoulders and the back 
So I want to create some sort of a hoodie that will make me love it more. <laughs> so, and since I am not a knitter, it's going to be like the biggest obstacle. Uh, yeah, so I, I may regret it. So what I'm doing right now is that I'm thinking because um, my idea is to knit the hoodie in the pattern with, with the big flowers so that you get that symmetry of having big flowers in the bottom, small flowers in the top, and then big flowers on the hoodie. I think it's going to look awesome. So now I am in that process of um, trying to construct a hoodie. Yeah, so I'm working on the design of the hoodie. And I just wanted to show, you know, here is the jacket, all the yarn I used for that. And this is what's left of the, of the yarn. It's a lot, right? And it is a lot taking in consideration that I have casted on uh, all of this for the hoodie. I'm going to make a tube construction for the hoodie. And I am not sure of what I'm doing. So I won't be talking too much about what I got going on here before the very end. And if I see if I succeeded with it. But let's say that it's a failure then, hey, I will at least have like a, a funky scarf somehow. But, oh my God, look how bright and sunny this jacket look. Now it's from the back. So I hope in time that I will be able to attach the hoodie and, uh, and close it in this upload here. Okay, let's, let's talk about the hoodie. Okay, <laughs> you see... I fear that someone is going to ask me how I made it <laughs> and it would be like a, a complete puzzle for me to explain it in words. So um, I'm just going to take you through the thought process of it. Disclaimer, I am not a professional knitter. So I am actually having big issues adding on a hoodie. It's the first time I'm trying it. But this is my thought process. This is the lower part of the jacket. And look how it's got uh, this pattern with the big flowers. And the background patterns are these uh, blue-green tones. And then in the middle of the jacket, it switches. Where now the blue-green tones are the small flowers and the red colors are the background. The sleeves also got the pattern of the small flowers and the red background. So I'm thinking the hoodie, to kind of tie things together, the hoodie should absolutely be knitted in this style here. You know, with a big flower and then the blue-green stripes. Then to be really smart, you could knit the stripes in the same direction as the coat but 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 I'm running into issues because um, then I'm taking a, a knitted hoodie like let me just grab the one that I'm looking at <clears throat> like here we got a knitted sweater with a hoodie on it so I just uh, folded it together and then I can see that a hoodie is constructed in this case by two pieces and they are knitted in a shape so that there's like room for um, the head shape, right? And I can see that it's, it's one piece looking like this and then it's sewed together with this stitch line that goes all the way from the tip to the neck so it's like two identical pieces well <laughs> when you're doing fair isle knitting the back of your fair isle knitting is looking like this 
I don't think that's a nice display. I would love to have an, the inside of the hoodie lin lined with the same knitted uh, checker squares like on the jacket. So I kind of at first was thinking that okay if I want to line this hoodie with a checker pattern then it means that I have to knit like four pieces that are totally identical like one from the half of the hoodie the back of the hoodie and then do the same for the inside no way is that gonna happen because I could barely knit two identical sleeves seriously and I was following a recipe right so doing going rogue with no recipe and have to knit four identical pieces that's not gonna happen and then I came up with this idea that I don't want the stripes to go this way because I would hate to have a seaming up here where stripes are meeting because when the hoodie is lying down and you're not having it on your head the garment would most likely be folded like this on your back and right here I would love to have like one giant big flower and no seam um, is it called a seam I don't know what it is <laughs> I don't want this line here where I've sewn two pieces together so I am thinking like crazy and I came up with this idea I knitted my um, my hoodie in a tube <laughs> it was a Peter to cast on 200 of these knitting loops because it's like turning and t twisting on the coil so I just knew that no way I'm gonna try my luck and cast on two times so I knitted it in one long tube and I folded the checker lining pattern inside and then I just um, mended the edges together to keep it in shape so now I got this which could be like a super cute bag actually you could actually make a bag or maybe like a scarf I don't know lots of possibilities but okay back to the hoodie <laughs> my idea is that if I if I take a flower like this one and says that's gonna be the center so like like this flower that's gonna be the center so when the hoodie is down you will see this flower and no seam allowance or seam um, go like not I, I won't have a, a sewn edge here so now what I got to do is to sew this side together put an edge a knitted edge ribbon on this edge right here you know just like the front of the jacket got this red knitted uh, edge thing right there and then I have to cut open down here because this is going to be attached to the jacket that's how I'm gonna sew and, and attach the hoodie to the jacket and because I have to cut a tube open I want to film it <laughs> because there is like some uh, you know like something really scary about cutting a knitwork I'm not used to it so it freaks me out and maybe you guys are thinking the same like you would love to see someone cut a knitwork before you try it yourself but what I have done is that I took my sewing machine and then I I sewed this cable like one line here and then one line here and now the plan is that I'm gonna cut in between those two lines and then I'm gonna salvage the edges on both sides and then I would actually have opened up 
my uh, <laughs> my hoodie. It's scary. Let's just do it, man. Let's just go for it. Okay. Are you ready? This feels like I'm doing something. I have checked this like a thousand times before I'm finally putting the scissor to the network. Imagine if you, you, you got like one job, one chance. Hopefully when I have salvaged the edges, it won't. Um, disintegrate it's you know like oh oh my god look at this look at that edge right here look how perfect okay so oh I love it I think it's gonna work so let me just try and uh, salvage the edges so this end together and then see what we got so I salvaged the edges and they look kind of sturdy. I don't think that it's going to unravel. Seriously. It, it really looks like it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I hope. Fingers crossed. And then I used blanket sti stitch to sew the two ends together. And now I'm just going back and forth below the blanket stitch to make it stronger. So hopefully it won't uh, come undone because yeah, I'm going to wear this jacket. I'm going to wear this jacket. I actually like it. I love the fresh colors. It's just so cheering to wake up in the morning and then put on this colorful warm jacket. You know, when you're just, it's not like real summer yet. So it's a bit chilly to get out of bed. And this wool is um, super soft. It's not like a scratchy, scratchy wool. So, all in all, I am really loving this project. I am stoked about how addictive this knitting have become in my head. And I think it's because of the possibilities. It's like everything is possible. Imagine, um, you can just uh, sit and then do an add-on like a hoodie. If if I have sewn this as with fabric or something, I think it would be a little bit difficult afterwards to add a hoodie without having to peel up what you already have constructed and sewed together. But with knitwear, it seems like you can um, you can simply just stitch on. All your add-ons like pockets, hoodies, belts, or I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm soon in the end here and then we can flip it around. <clears throat> yeah, I could do this with a machine, but I just like the um, handcraft because everything on this jacket is so handmade. This, um... Could we call it like slow fashion? This is totally slow fashion. Yeah, I need to... Tie a knot. I'll do that off camera. Okay, I'll just do it now. Okay, so now the plan is... Drum roll, will it work? Did I catch all the layers? Yes, I did. Perfect. <clears throat> now, the plan is that this hoodie, once it's pressed, it will be a bit wider than this. Now, it will be attached to the jacket down here. And when it is attached, it will flap over exactly like this. So this is what you're going to see on the shoulders. You're going to see this flower knitted with no, um, uh, no pieces sewn together. And the pieces sewn together, you know, it looks like this, you know. So that's why I didn't want it 
down here. So now I just got this tiny edge here, which I am hopefully think would be covered mostly by the color of the, ja the, the jacket, because the, 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 the color of uh, the, the neck is going to be up here. Wasn't that just a cute solution? Okay, so let's let's put on the red edge ribbon on this. So now I got the trim, the red trim. So this is how the hoodie is looking. This is inside of it. And I know it looks a little bit narrow, but I like it a lot because I don't like when a hoodie is too wide and it's coming down in your ears, in your eyes, I mean. <laughs> so it's got like the perfect length for what I like. And uh, when you're wearing it, I'm hoping that you can see one whole flower on the side. And then on the top here is a flower that's going to show when it's attached. So. Yeah, it looks cute with that red trim around it. Really love it a lot. Now I'm going to try and attach it to the jacket. Oh my god, it was such a good call with that hoodie. I love, love, love the hoodie. Oh, just look. <laughs> just look how nice it is with, with a hoodie. And now, of course, it's a little bit sloppy because it's not on a human but hanging <laughs> I love it a lot it does something to the profile you know like and you can still I didn't bend this over but you can still bend this color up here <laughs> it just does something to the whole uh, design I think or maybe I just adore hoodies in general so I thought it looked like it missed something without a hoodie oh it is so perfect I love it a lot and you can bend up the cuffs on the sleeves oh. looks so cute also yeah it was a good a good choice now it's finished I also freaking adore this pocket I mean the, the ad I added on this uh, pocket right here and I love that it's so invisible it just blends in with the design of the jacket yeah all in all I'm very satisfied let's go take a look at that hoodie one more time Ooh. Perfect. Perfection. I am so glad that I didn't need to attach it, assemble it down here so that the assembly stitches is inside the hoodie and not on the outside. Yeah, super likable. Thank you for watching or oh, maybe I should just fix it now it's hanging on the hanger so it looks a little bit weird but when I'm wearing it because I'm fat it doesn't have that off uh, shoulder seams oops we got a little kitty <laughs> Oh my god, don't you just love my cat just taking a dump? I mean, my world is nothing but perfect. So the cat is taking a huge crap of dump next to my jacket. Oh my god. <sighs> this is what's left of the yarn in the kit that I bought from Crystal Sci-Fi. It was a an art knit kit where you got the recipe and then a lot of these uh, skeins of wool but there is a bunch left also when you think about that I added a pocket I added extra cuffs on the sleeves and then the whole hoodie that's also 
needed with something inside of the hoodie so tons of uh, yarn left I think that I want to since it's wool and it's very nice and soft even though it is wool I don't know how they do it <laughs> I think I want to knit some wrist warmers from uh, the leftovers here but that's just a, a small project and I got all summer to do it so I got plenty of time to do that <clears throat> I really have enjoyed the knitting process this is uh, the recipe that came with this flower power jacket and Crystal Seifert is a Danish private owned small business so I like to support it so I uh, went out and shopped for more yarn kit art knits kits or what she's calling it <laughs> oh my god I hope that you're not like totally into knitting and then cringe your toes about my expressions but yeah I shopped and it arrived in this beautiful bag <laughs> So, yeah, lots of goodies inside of here. Actually, yeah, first of all, I got this. Um, I want to knit like a poncho. So I chose this one. Maybe there is a bigger picture. I chose this poncho. It just looks so beautiful in the picture and then I love the yarn the yarn is this um, is it called a burg not a bergen an aubergine aubergine I think it's called don't you just love it aubergine with this dark blue oh my god it, and then this kind of sand color just so lovely and then this greenish turquoise looking like uh, the stone malachite malachite green oh it's gonna be so beautiful and I think it's just for a beginner like me it's gonna be easy you know because I can do it on a round loop and then just need to concentrate on taking is it called decrease increase I just need to be sure to increase it correctly up here I'm not so sure that I'm so fond of the the way it ends up here it looks like it's an eye cord stitch you know where you uh, get this uh, edge that won't curl hmm I don't know I was just thinking that if I had a lot of yarn left over that I might like like uh, some sort of a rip ending for the neck because it is going to be worn during winter so it could be nice to have something warm around the, the neck also hmm. but isn't it just a lovely project I love that it comes with everything because as a beginner like me I really I actually I think it's so difficult to read these recipes you know there is a lot of terminology that I it's like read, reading a second language for me because it's foreshortened so much but um, I, I guess I have to get used to it but totally a nice project that I think I will begin on first because then uh, it probably with some luck would be finished around autumn and then when you buy kits from her you get this cute note look it's a picture from her store I would love to just browse around in her yarn shop she also got these pre-knitted models of everything that she, she sells and you can I think you can buy them and then it's like handwritten saying really good 
you know i hope you enjoy it <laughs> just like a thank you for your order you know and then um i got some round loops in the correct size and width if it's called that because i got a big knitting kit this is the last thing that's in that shopping bag oh my god i love this jacket it's a it's not going to be a long jacket like the the one that i just finished but i just simply love 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 the color combination there is something really likable about this range of purple and this very dark aubergine I don't think that my camera even picks up how beautiful this um, and this is like a very dark indigo a very dark dioxazine purple almost turning a little bit indigo and you can really tell that it's like home dyed yarn if you can call it that because it's not like a hundred percent this color throughout the skein there is like these tiny variations so um, I just love it a lot it doesn't really show on camera but there is this variation that I talk about where you can see specks of other colors in it and I simply just adore that when I look at a skein like this it makes me think about it could also be fun to knit with a double strand so if you picked two yarns and then just knit it with one st st strand combine them together but hmm. <clears throat> maybe I can test that out when I'm doing the wrist warmer right but oh these fat is it colors I I don't know to me a skank is something else so I think it's called a skein. I don't know what to call it. Let's just call them balls because then I won't be saying something wrong. But these balls of yarn, that's how big they were in the first kit I had. You know, now they're like down to like this. <laughs> so look at the difference. Yeah, but it's just uh, such a lovely color combination. It's just really sparks joy. Like here it is. Oh my god. It's going to be such a joy to knit this. Look at this beautiful jacket. Look at that beautiful pattern that's on this jacket. Where you got like that hot pink as an accent to these hearts. Isn't it just lovely? <clears throat> and I love the way that the green is... Uh, wo woven into that purple who would have thought that green and purple look so awesome together especially in knitwear I also like these cables because I tried knit knitting the checkerboard and it's like you know did that done that <laughs> so it's just kind of nice that the whole recipe is so different from the jacket that I just finished but now I know because I got experience you could call it from my first knitting project that I need to include pockets on this one because I just I just like pockets on jackets and then maybe even a hoodie because I think the neck up here looks a little bit like a robe or something it looks a little bit weird so I think that it would dress it up nicely if it had a hoodie. But that's just me. So, But oh, it's so intimidating looking at the recipe. <laughs> it is so intimidating. <clears throat> These instructions, I read them and then I read them one more time. And then I completely forgot what I read when I finished the page. So I mostly just uh, eyeball the picture and trying to figure out what the hell do they mean, you know. But it's going to be knitted with the same technique, the fair aisle. So at least I, I think I got some good practice with that. 
so it can't go that wrong right <laughs> but thank you for watching this uh, long upload about my knitting yeah just just the knitting but I think it's nice that um, I'm supporting this small family business um, happens to be like Danish and everything so it just feels so good you know that everything just combines itself in, in a higher um, unit or what's it called in English when knitting is doing something good for me and then I can also support this whole production that she's got because I know that she's got a lot of um, activities going on with getting this wool from Shetland getting it dyed over in Shetland also so there's a, a lot of people uh, involved with this craftsmanship that I think it's so nice to be able to support so I don't think that I would um, consider knitting with anything else than this so far but you never know. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a nice week. Bye bye.